gonna jam for a sec. <laughs> Just gonna wait until everyone's here. Or until the song runs out. Oh, it's six o'clock. Oh, no. No oh, more no fun. No more music. <laughs> Welcome Hello. to Miming 101. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Xander Genre. And I'm Bonnie Gordon. I guess, and together we are the, the Library, library bards. bards. Hey. But that oh, doesn't matter you. here, because no. this is not about the Library Bards, even <laughs> though everything we do is about the Library Bards. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is about voiceover. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> Uh, for me, uh, you might have heard my voice in the fighting game Dive Kick. I was the announcer for that, uh, as well as the MMO RPG Dragon Nest and the anime uh, Final Judgment and the live action movie The Mystical Laws. Uh, and a lot of people would, I think, most recognize me from Street Fighter V. I'm the voice of Rainbow Mika, as well as Silk in Fire Emblem Echoes. I also sing the ending credits song in Fire Emblem. Spoilers. Uh, not really. It's There's on YouTube. There's a song at the end. <laughs> There's a song, you guys. <laughs> it's in English this time. Surprise. <laughs> uh, I also do a lot of uh, 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 Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. I'm in a lot of uh, PS Vita games, such as uh, Guided Fate Paradox, Demon Days. <laughs> PS Vita? What a popular platform. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> the games that no one plays. Uh, I also do a lot of anime. I'm, I'm on Iki Tosin. I'm on a Cartoon Network show called Mighty Magiswords. Uh, if, you, if you're a fan of that show, it's so fun. Uh, but yeah, and, and we do a lot of things that we can't talk about yet, because that's, that's the way voiceover works. We'll get into that later, but <laughs> most of the stuff that we're working on, we can't talk about. Three letters you need to know. N-D-A. N -D -A. <laughs> that wasn't planned. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it sound more exciting when you say it like a cheer. Sure. But really, okay. it's like NDA. <laughs> do, do. Yeah, non disclosure like agreement is yes, what NDA means. Non disclosure means. agreement. And that so. just means they, uh, whenever you do anything with voiceovers or anything really uh, within entertainment, they make you sign a lot of paperwork saying that you can't talk about it for sometimes years. Yeah. And if you do, they can sue you for lots for of money. Millions of dollars. <laughs> so we don't talk about it. Yeah, because you'll get in trouble. Exactly. But we are here now to talk about the stuff we can talk about. Huzzah! Which is voiceover. Yeah. Woo! We excited? So uh, if at any point you guys have specific questions or anything like that, feel free to raise your hand and, or just shout it at us. Yeah, yeah. It is so a nice Throw way. something at us, <laughs> you know. Um, but otherwise, we're going to go... Uh, Right in my eye. Uh, <laughs> we'll go like kind of step by step what the process is uh, for us on like a normal basis. Uh, so normally, uh, if you're like kind of established enough, you have an agent that will send you things, or you seek things out yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Even when you do have an agent, you, you seek, seek things, things out, out yourself. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so in that case, you'll get um, uh, auditions coming into you via email uh, that contain sides. So these are a dis short description of a character, if you're lucky, an image of the character, and then a couple of lines. Uh, and this is specifically for um, if it's like animation or video games. Uh, that type of thing. Otherwise, the other type of voiceover is commercial voiceover, and that's where you actually make money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's more of, do you want to give them a, a, a little taste? It's new from Electrolux. Try our new product today. That's it. <laughs> the real fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Using um, Colgate will clean your teeth. <laughs> Four to five doc dentist degree. Uh -huh. uh, we're going to have to take that, that again. That fifth dentist, we don't know what happened to him. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so in order to get those auditions, you either you have to reach out, uh, find some services. But the most in tool, the most important tool in your kit, is your demo reel. Dun, 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 dun. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> I figured you'd want some fanfare. Yeah, I like it. Uh, your demo reel normally is around three minutes long, and it's something that you want to put together, and it's basically like your headshot and resume for voiceover. So uh, you're going to want to have a different type of reel for different types of voiceover. Mm -hmm. For most people that are here, they want to get into animation or interactive, which is video games. Uh, and that also includes uh, translation, which would be anime. Mm -hmm. um, English dub. English dub. And so uh, you want to put together a reel of voices, uh, starting off with the voices that you're most comfortable with mm -hmm. and can do for a, an extended period of time, like three to four hours a session. Yes. Uh, so you don't want to put... For example, mm -hmm. uh, I, I am the voice of Rainbow Mika. 
it is not on my reel. That's a lot of shouting. <laughs> it's a lot of shouting, and my <laughs> vocal cords hate me for it after. So I tend to not uh, showcase that voice on my reel because I don't. I as as much as I get cast as a character in that realm, uh, a lot of the time I would prefer to have a voice not as screaming and rough. Uh, it's a very it's a very um, texture textured uh, voice. Mm -hmm. So I try and keep that towards. If I do feature anything like that, similar to it on my reel, it's towards the end of my reel. Yeah. Most of the time, casting directors are looking for um, these characters that are within the same timbre as the original characters. Mm -hmm. So your natural voice is going to fit a certain profile. Even right. if you can do higher and you can do lower, uh, you're going to want to start off with something, especially if you're slating your name. Just say that in your normal voice so that mm -hmm. the, vo the casting director gets a good idea of where you're comfortable speaking. And the reason why we're starting with reels is because most people who are interested in voiceover, uh, one of the first steps within getting into voiceover is, is seeking out an agent. The first thing they're going to ask for is your reel. Anytime yeah. you submit, doesn't matter what kind of voices you can do, they'll say, send us your reel. So we're starting with this in this panel. That way you guys can get an idea of some basic things. And, and then as soon as we're done with the reels, we're going to go into breaking down uh, things that you can do on your own while seeking out uh, certain voiceover auditions. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we already covered like that we want to keep within our register, but what else would you put on a reel? Bonnie Gordon. <laughs> uh, good question, Xander. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, well, here's, here's, a, here's something that we get asked, or I guess uh, uh, at cons, we do a lot of different cons throughout the year, and a lot of people come up to us and say, hey, I can do a lot of different impressions of people, uh, or a lot of different impressions of characters. I can do a great SpongeBob, I can do a great this and that. Like, is that something I'd want to put on our reel? And we usually say no. Because no. here's the problem with that. Those people already have the job. Yeah. Uh, if you send in a reel full of impressions, the agent's going to go, great, they can do all of these voices that someone else already has getting a paycheck for. Now, so they don't... Oh. That being said, there is like a whole industry for ADR where they need people right. at a reduced rate yeah. uh, <laughs> to do the voices for things like video games or spin-offs or things like that. Right. Or if uh, you're impersonating a celebrity who happens to be deceased and they're going to need new lines. Uh, but mm. that's a whole different thing. Right. <laughs> uh, but for example, say you can do a great SpongeBob impression. Uh, instead of doing a SpongeBob impression on your reel or in an audition, uh, do something that's unique that gives it a twist, like uh, have it have like a stuffy nose, or put it in a different register in your voice, or give him give him a, more of a speech impediment, or like some kind of wacky uh, timbre in his voice, or, or a his southern accent, or a southern or accent, or exactly. Yeah. So now it it it's in the same register as SpongeBob, but at the same time, you're not doing an impression. Now you're making a unique character and a unique voice all of your own. Yeah. Oh, so with your register, with your voice, there are different type of like octaves. So it's either a lower register or a higher register. So some people, if you're getting into the booth, they'll, the director will say like, can you do that line again, but give me a little bit higher or give right. me a little bit lower. So most of the time when I'm doing things and I'm doing like something evil or a villain, they'll want it in my lower register. But if I'm doing like a kid or something, they want it a little bit higher. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing lower. with like a pirate voice or That's something that is my lower yeah. register. Right. Or my higher register. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah. So during the three minute reel, yep. you're actually about to actually pretty much give out what kind of voice that you want to Sure. Oh yeah. Yo, yeah. So we're actually so we're actually going to play our our animation reels for you guys to give you examples. And this is two examples of uh of reels that for example, Xander's reel is all work that he has done. It's certain anime and, and video games and and uh projects that he's already done. When I made my reel, mine's really old, you guys. I apologize in advance, it's like from two thousand nine. But uh when I made my animation reel, I didn't have anything to put on it. I didn't have any any copy of, of stuff that I've done. So I just went into a booth and improvised everything. And that's something you can do. Like voices that you're really strong with, just make up stuff to say. And then if you, if you have someone who can e uh, edit audio or if you can edit audio yourself, add like some sound effects and music. So uh, when you listen to my reel, it'll sound like all of this stuff was from projects that I've actually done. But really it was just me going like, I'm going to say something about plaid now. Uh, oh, yeah. 
But yeah, so you I wanna think you mean Pallad. <laughs> Pallad. Anyway, um, we've done this panel a lot, and now we can <laughs> quote each other's reels. We're a little, <laughs> we're a little delirious right now, you guys. We're sorry. But yeah, this uh, is mine. Okay, this is Anders. Anders genre. I keep. <laughs> Johnny Gott wins. Lotus Marsh has a fascinating ecology. I mean, magic. Magic is great. Nothing I cook is ever good enough. Oh, so embarrassing. To be free <laughs> from my horrible lady, Miss Cruz. <laughs> I'm a weapon, not a walking stick. What do you want? Make it quick. My enchanted cap lets me see through your clothes. I didn't write Sometimes this. Sometimes <laughs> I spend all afternoon just rubbing my pooch. I used to be blonde before I lost all my hair. I'm sorry. I can't hear you over the sound of how awesome I am. Please do not touch me without permission. Easiest job in the world. Stand around doing nothing. Wish I got paid, though. Best part of my job? Trying on people's clothes. Everything's too small, but I make it work. Your harm, you hearties. Keep your enemies all filled with fright. Sea spray is hard on the throat. You are the reincarnation of Buddha. We recently discovered this golden urn holding a vital key to the reincarnation of Buddha. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was a weird movie. <laughs> yeah, I, every After, time he goes, I don't, who wrote this? I'm like, but seriously, who did? Yeah. Like, where are, the, where are these lines? With that one, it was for an anime, and then I was so excited that I booked it, and then did the job, and then I did some research afterwards, and it was like Japanese Scientology, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> But I got paid, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're going to play an example of mine. Uh, I did not have any scripted copy, so I just made things up. And this is a perfect example of how even though you're like, oh, well, I don't, I don't have anything that I've done. I don't know what I can do. Like, you can make a very professional-sounding voiceover reel with, with just making it up yourself. So. It's loading. <laughs> I'm going to bring it up on YouTube. <laughs> I have bad connections in here. <laughs> I I have I have a good connection. Vamp. Voices is fun. So, <laughs> want to talk about these are these are examples of uh, uh, interactive and animation voiceover reels. And so a difference would be a commercial reel. Mm -hmm. Or an industrial reel. Or uh, if, for example, you wanted to get into audiobooks, that's a completely different uh, type of voiceover. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, look who pops up right underneath you. Matthew Mercer. Matt Mercer is right <laughs> under my reel. Back off, Matt. This is my panel. <laughs> Screw you, Matt Mercer. The career we all want. He follows us everywhere. <laughs> no. We're both really good friends with him, so it's okay. <laughs> He's here in spirit. We'll just, we'll just take a snapshot selfie with his picture. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're allowed... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. It's definitely high noon. <laughs> it's, definitely, it's definitely time for Critical Role. <laughs> oh, God. It's still loading. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Here's yeah. A lot of people are like, we can't afford to, you know, uh, rent out studios and stuff. There, there. If you get a USB mic from someplace like Guitar Center or Best Buy, uh, you can get really good quality mics. We we use a, a few different types. We have a, a Snowball that we use kind of like as a travel mic because it's just easier. Uh, and, and uh, co very compact. So we use that for our traveling. So if we're at, you know, we, we do cons almost every weekend. So if we're at a different hotel, uh, we don't want to pack our nice mic and fly with it uh, everywhere. So a snowball is great. You get pretty decent sound quality and, uh, and it's really easy to use. You just plug it into your laptop. Another mic that we use is the AT2020. That's Ooh, that's the first time that I've heard you say it out loud. Very good. What? I know you what it is. You just always say it. I <laughs> so I never get to say it. The AT anyway. 2020 is what we have. It's also a USB mic, and it's actually not that expensive. It was, uh, I believe, a hundred, hundred twenty dollar range, which is not bad for a mic that you're going to get, you know, years of use out of. And it also just plugs into your laptop. We both uh, tend to use a audio program called Audacity for editing, and Bonnie it's free. Oh, mommy, it's mommy, mommy, it's can we have two, please? Well, 
they're more expensive, but there's nothing like them anywhere else in the whole festival. <laughs> Dose, por favor. Uh, excuse me, young whippersnappers, but have you ever heard of the word uh, sexploration? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my! <laughs> Telemetry download complete in five, four, three, two, one. Hey guys, um, did anyone find my inhaler? Oh, what on earth is that? I will not let you go out that door wearing blood. Dear diary, I just ran into Sam today. He is so super sexy! For a mist of dawn and pools of light, a siren's call to split the night. I'm not from New York. I'm from Bensonhurst. What the f***? Vince, have you lost it? When I think about him, I get goose pimply all over. Great. Rated PG. <laughs> So that's an example. All of those voices, that was uh, under a minute 30. So that was one minute and 24 seconds. So you can pack a lot into a very short amount of time. And that was just me in a booth just making stuff up. I had no idea what I was going to say. I would get in there and it'd be like, sexploration. Ooh, and I'd I, be like... Can we put a ban on that word okay. from your mouth? Oh. <laughs> There's nothing wrong about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, you know, it's, it's just a matter of uh, finding voices that you feel are your strongest and just kind of uh, making something, saying something that you think the character would say. Um, yeah. And uh, just a quick note, too. A lot of the time, cast casting directors will listen to about 30 seconds of your reel yeah. before like moving on because they get a lot that come in. And so um, specifically with casting directors, like they're on a mission, and if it's not right there, they're going to move on. But if you get in with the job and get in with the studio and you're professional and you're able to do your work uh, relatively quickly, you can get in on like a studio's roster, and they'll kind of bypass the casting directors and go, oh, I know Bonnie can do this voice or this voice, so I'm just going to call her in for it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still auditions because a lot of it still has to get approved by the original IP holders overseas. But uh, with the studio, once you're in, it, it's easier to, to book jobs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, over there real quick. Yep. yep. Sure. Yeah, we were going to definitely move on yeah. to that as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 perfect. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's a great segue. Uh, yeah. Because a lot of people are like, well, with, with voiceover, with making a reel and stuff, how, you know, if I don't know how to edit well and if I don't know, you know, what to record, like, exactly. Right. Uh, like, what, where do I even begin? And the best advice is, uh, especially since you guys are all living, if, uh, I'm assuming you're all, like, in the Southern California area, and if not, you know, you're able to get around. There are so many amazing classes and workshops that you can take with uh, incredible voiceover casting directors. And a lot of the ones and a lot of the workshops. Bang yep. Zoom is yeah, a good one. Yeah, Bang Zoom is great. Uh, Crispin. Crispin Freeman. Freeman uh, does actually online ones as well. So if you're not able to travel, uh, he's able to do one-on-one -on -one sessions online. I think Chuck Huber does as well. Yep, Chuck Huber does some online as well. As well, uh, look up S uh, Steve Reisenberg. He is uh, he's, he does very small, intimate classes and workshops. Uh, they're about four weeks long, one one uh, day a week, and he'll go through every different type: uh, animation, uh, video game, commercial. He, every week he'll touch on a different one. So there's different workshops and classes you can take, um, and a lot of the time they will record what you do within the class and give you copy of that recording, so you can take snippets of what you've done and use that for a reel as well. And sometimes the classes and workshops in include a real production within the cost of it. So look into the deal. So a lot of time reels cost a lot of money, mm -hmm. um, to especially to get them professionally made if you're not doing them yourselves. Um, what I would look into is looking into the workshops and classes that include a reel with the cost because they're going to direct you, they're going to edit it for you, they're going to make sure it sounds professional and it's in the time of what uh, what casting directors want. And that's a big plus. So it, it's a win-win. For something like that, you're normally looking at around like 250 Like some some uh, That's well, like the price range for something sometimes like that. More. Sometimes I know, more. Sometimes yeah, more. Bill Farmer, I think, costs about like six to 800 for a reel. Oh, yeah, yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
better chance if we actually want to pursue a workout career, what do you think would be a better chance? Mm -hmm. Do multiple voices that you think you can do well but not really sure, but that will still be versatile, or mm -hmm. one voice that you're so good at it, mm -hmm. you actually like, you know, can do it as a profession, but you only have to have like one. That's a good question. So the question is, like, um, if you're strong with one voice in particular, like, how do you fill up your reel? Do you fill it up with other voices that you might not be as strong in? And I would say, yeah, because even if you don't feel like um, you're, you're particularly strong with those voices, you never know what a casting director is looking for. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, the people that book voices are the weird, unique, out there voices. A good example is uh, Seth uh, Green with Family Guy. Uh, coming in for the role of Chris like everybody was just doing kind of like a standard teenage boy And he came in with this weird thing and it's like oh, okay And the, he booked the role because it was so bizarre and different and different and that's what's gonna stand out when a casting director is listening to the same type of voice over and over uh, a lot of the time so moving on to let's say uh, you start getting auditions and we're gonna go through also websites that you can find online uh, where they where people post uh, auditions that you can audition for yourself without having an agent uh, in fact, that's how I got my start, is auditioning for smaller things. Uh, Voices.com is a little bit frowned upon right now because it just got bought out, and it's, and it's not oh, I didn't the best. Know that. Yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, it's, it's a little bit on a gray area, but uh, if you wanted this to check it out. This panel is sponsored by Voices.com. Yeah. No, <laughs> and then uh, there's, voice, there's always Voices123. Uh, there's different websites for audiobooks. If you have a very nice speaking voice, like if you're like, hey, I can't do a lot of like actual voices, but I have a very nice soothing speaking voice look into audiobooks yeah. because so many different authors are looking for a unique nice soothing voice uh, for their you know for their novels for their short stories and uh, there's actually quite a bit of money in it yeah. as well if you're able to record and edit yourself and make it sound professional you can you know knock out a couple of our friends do audiobooks and they knock out a few a week and just make you know, a couple thousand right there, a couple thousand right there, yeah. It's so crazy. it's acx.org, that's the audiobook exchange, mm -hmm. and that's not only for authors to put up their thing, but for voice actors to go and look for authors mm -hmm. who want an audiobook version. But just so you know, with audiobooks, it's a lot of work. It's like a lot I, of work. I don't do audiobooks, not because I don't want to, but because I do not have the time. Yeah. Uh, between all of the jobs that we do and the conventions that we do, I would not have the time to sit and record and edit, like, 500 pages. Right, because it's, it's a, a lot like, of work. If you think about how long it takes you to read a book, now you have to read it perfectly with the same intona intonation without getting a sore throat, that kind of thing. And edit it. So and like edit if you it. mess up a word, you have to go back and you know re edit that uh, together. Some so of us never mess up. Uh huh. <laughs> so if that's the case, what would you recommend? If, if not audiobooks, if you want to do audiobooks, you don't feel like you don't want to go through that much work, but it's still a recommendation. Mm -hmm. I would look into commercials uh, with yeah, like commercials. voices one two three voices dot com. They always the, that's where I, I booked a few commercials when I first started doing voiceover. The new from Electrolux, try our new product today. What I did earlier, I, I actually did that. So that's the only reason why I said that out loud because yeah. I was like that was that was a commercial I actually did that, for an uh, industrial video. Brings up another point mm -hmm. too. Uh, you want to have a separate commercial reel, right? Uh, and then if you have done commercials before, you want to put your work on there, but don't take copy from commercials that already exist that you did not do mm -hmm. and put your voice on it, you can if get you're gonna big trouble. If you're going to do that, change the script yeah. tremendously so it's not the exact uh, commercial. A perfect example of this is a friend of mine who is uh, luckily very successful in voiceover right now, but she, when she was first starting out, she was trying to get an agent and she made a commercial reel and sent uh, her commercial reel to an agency and the agent listened to it, really liked her, but wrote her and said, hey, I really like you. Um, here's the thing, your reel, you need to do something about your reel because that McDonald's commercial that you have on your reel, my client booked that. You did not. Yeah. I know what, what commercial you're reading from because my client that I already represent has done that commercial and now you're doing a re on your reel, it sounds like this is something that I've done when you did not. So the agent was like, I really like you, I would like to sign you, change your reel. Yeah, and then because, she murdered her in the middle of the night. Yes. Well, weird. well, because now <laughs> this now this agent has, <laughs> now this agent has her client that she's already representing with her reel that has that McDonald's commercial on it. And now she has, an, now she wants to sign this other girl that has the exact same commercial on her reel that she did not do. So that makes the agency look shady. So that, that makes the agency look like they just make all of their clients read the same script. So if you're going to do like a McDonald's commercial, just change the words. Just be like, 
did you, you know, da 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 da, you know, try this and, you know, just rewrite some of Mac the words. Rab. Just that. Yeah. <laughs> Booked it. You did Yay! it. I would book Give it right now. Give me that McDonald's money. <laughs> I wish. Uh, yeah, I feel like co commercials are definitely where a lot of the money is. Um, uh, animation, anime, video games. Uh, people are shocked. I'll, you know, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. It doesn't pay very much. Um, you got that on video. Good. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, well, just to give you an example, um, I've, I've done voices for Nintendo. I've done voices for Capcom. They've all paid non-union. Uh, because very small. If it's coming in from Japan, technically it's translation, and right. so it's not it's under the union. It's considered English dubbing. So even though I'm playing really popular characters and really big franchises, I'm getting a non-union buyout. So you know we don't get residuals, we don't get a union rate. Uh, but again, I still love what I do, so I'm not complaining. I'm just letting everyone know, <laughs> commercials. <laughs> are definitely where there's a, more of a, a budget. Yeah. If you yeah. guys remember, too, not too long ago, there was the strike uh, from voice actors mm -hmm. with SAG-AFTRA be because of that very reason. So mm -hmm. people were doing voices for these AAA video game titles and not getting residuals, but the games were making a bunch. But yeah, mm -hmm. that got settled. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not the best way. So now, let's say mm. that you are um, uh, auditioning from your house. Uh, you know. Uh, spend money on a nice microphone, uh, learn how to edit and record yourself. That is the biggest advice we can give people because mm -hmm. uh, you can have an amazing voice, record an audition, someone can record an audition that doesn't have you know, the bo best voice that they want, but if their audition sounds like 10 times more professional than yours, it makes a difference when people are listening to it. If, they, if uh, the casting agent can hear background noise, a dog barking, a helicopter, just anything, anything that stands out, like the, an echo in a room, um, it, it, that can really make a difference in your audition. And a way to do that is, a way to fix that is to learn how to edit yourself through something like Audacity or GarageBand. These are all free programs that um, you can get and take, uh, watch YouTube tutorials. Learn how to use noise removal. Noise removal will be your best friend. That's true. Look up noise removal. Yeah. Um, it, that's gonna be your best friend uh, when editing. And also, here's a fun trick. Say we're, Xander and I travel a lot, and I've had to audition, or have, I've had, we've both had uh, to send in auditions last minute for projects, where they say, we need this by the end of the day, and we're in a hotel room, you know, with weird sounds happening all around us. Throw a Blinking bl yeah. right across the hall. <laughs> yeah, it's a television set, you know, like you get noise. Throw a blanket over your head, and you could do this at home too. A blanket over your head, it, it drowns out the sound, uh, and it really helps uh, get some of that background noise out and, and, and get some of that echo out. As it well gets as a, really warm, too, so yeah. be prepared yeah. for that. <laughs> also, uh, also, going if you're at home, use your closet. A lot of people think, oh, well, I don't have the space for a, a nice home studio. I don't. Neither do we. We yeah. use a closet. Like, we just step into our closet. Your clothes are the best type of soundproofing you can have. It's the only time I'll go back in the closet. <laughs> Just kidding. Waka waka. <laughs> so those are just little tricks that you can use when recording uh, from home or say I'm you're fired. talking about. Yeah. No, it's okay. You can go back in. It's Thanks. Fine. <laughs> You'll come out again. It's fine. Um, I'm here. <laughs> Glitter. <laughs> Uh, but in any case, uh, so now let's say that you're auditioning and you're doing well, and now you've booked the job. Now Good we can job. You, you did, did it. it. Now we can go into some of the fun stuff that happens, like within the booth and like behind the scenes stories of exciting things. Yeah. You want to start? So, uh, well, it, just to give you an example, again, I had mentioned before, you'll get an audition. Uh, a lot of the time, you'll get a slate of characters. If you're doing, uh, if you're, you have like a lower register voice, a lot of times you'll get a lot of male characters, and you'll get like the whole rundown of whichever male characters are in the project. Mm -hmm. If you have a higher register voice, you'll get the female characters and like the little kid uh, uh, roles as well. Or the old ladies. Or the old people. <laughs> yes, um, I, get, I just get all the old people. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so one of the uh, uh, pieces of advice that we give is to try to audition for everything yeah. that you get. Uh, even if you're like, I'm not quite confident in this voice, or I don't really do this that well. That's not your job to determine whether you can do it or not. No. It's the casting director or the director itself. Perfect example of that is I usually just try and audition for all the wacky, fun characters, because those are the kinds that I like to do. And I just auditioned for a project where I auditioned for all of the fun, wacky characters, and then got an email from the casting director going, uh, yeah, could you, email, could you also audition for this one that you didn't read for? And I was like, Okay, so I auditioned for that one because I was like, I'm not a good fit for this character. I'm not gonna get called. Was it the mom? It was the it mom, was mom character, character, and I was like, I'm not gonna get this. I, I'm not. I don't. I'm not gonna be good for this. And that's the one I got a call back for. 
Yep. Crossing my fingers. It's yeah. for a big thing. So yeah. wish me luck, everybody. But it, th it's just so surprising that all of the ones that I thought I would get, uh, I didn't get. They didn't like me. But the one that, <laughs> that I okay, that's didn't not want. true. No. <laughs> it was just one not a good fit at the time. Okay. <laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> So yeah, let's uh, so audition for everything was the point of that. Yeah. Audition for anything you feel like you can, uh, you can, you know, showcase Reasonably. yourself. Yep. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, so if you're auditioning for everything, they can see like, oh, and a lot of the time they won't have a big budget for for different things. Like when I go in to do a video game or, or an anime, I'll I'll they'll cast me as uh, you know like one character mainly, and then I'll go in do all the lines for that, and they're like, okay, great, you're also doing this and this and this, and I'll play like five characters. Because uh, they'll book you for a certain amount of time, and it's like a guaranteed time. So if you're in there for a guaranteed three hours, and you knock out all of your lines for your main character you're gonna be using that time that they have you because right. they have to pay you that rate They're anyway. like, great, we have this person for three hours, let's give them everything we can that fits their voice. And that so. includes background sound, which is called Walla. So those are the type of things where you'll have to improvise, like the students in a classroom or the people in a cafe and mm -hmm. like, oh my God, did you see someone so? Yeah. <laughs> she was chucking watermelon. Ah. Walla's my favorite because I can say whatever I want and I know no one's gonna hear me, but my goal is just to make the other people on the other side of the glass laugh. That's not the best advice. Yeah, Be don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horrible. Yeah, uh, and then the other is like incidentals, so characters that'll just have like one or two lines. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, if you have a higher register voice and you're going in, uh, they're trying to push more and more for higher register voices uh, for incidentals like female pilots or yeah. uh, lady doctors or things like that that would just have a couple mm -hmm. of lines. Or like you know, kid number two running by, like look at that, and then <laughs> running away. Yeah. Right? But you have to make sure that you give it enough variance in, in the tone of your voice that it doesn't sound like, especially if you have a main character. But if you have a main character, most of your time will be filled up with right. doing that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Well, a, a re another reason why that happens is, for example, to take a Family Guy with Seth MacFarlane. He uh, created Family Guy. Uh, with basically no budget, you know, he, he this was his baby project. He, you know, he wanted to get it up and and put his a lot of his own money into it. And sorry, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was. His, I know it what was you his, mean. It was his passion project, and so he ended up doing a Thank lot of the you. voices, like on the scratch tracks and on the on the on the um, whenever they were storyboarding it and showing it to the executives and trying to get it greenlit. And you know, if the executives like what they hear, they're gonna keep it. And also, then they just pay Seth MacFarlane, and he and he has to do everything. And then they they say money on all the stuff they don't have to uh, pay for. So Until that's one way of doing it. it becomes a smash hit and then he demands a pay for well, exactly. every character Exactly, but every it's role. A, another perfect example of that is a, a friend of ours is the creator of the show Mighty Magiswords on Cartoon Network and he does a lot of the voices about four or five different main characters on that show and it's because when he created it, he created it all by himself and like had to do practically everything and then once it got greenlit and picked up by Cartoon Network and put up there, they're like, great, we love all your voices, we don't wanna pay other people, just go in there and do it. And he gets paid a certain amount of money, but he has to do all of the voices. And it's a way of, for the executives to save money and also for the projects to get made you know, quicker and yeah. Now instead of bringing in five different people that they have to pay separately and schedule separately, they just have one guy doing everything. So yeah. it does make sense. Yeah, so, yeah. Any tips on variation for the voice? Mm. Yeah, so uh, one of the things like we had mentioned before of like changing the tone or the register of your voice. Or the speed. So one of the examples that I had given before, if, because a lot of people can do like the, the glottal thrust, which is like that stitch voice, so you're talking like this, and then this down here is stitch, but up here it's Elmo or Jigglypuff, or like, it's amazing yeah. just the tonal shift right. that can happen with that same technique of just like pushing in your Adam's apple. Right, and then so this is my normal speaking voice, but if I just lower it and slow it down, it can become a character that, and I can just add a little like roughness right, to it. All right, Well, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> but it's my it's my normal speaking voice. Just <laughs> adding <laughs> adding a little texture to it, or say um. If I'm talking like this and then just add like a stuffy nose to it, then it's a completely different character. But it's my normal talking voice. 
but just with a stuffy nose. These but now the, it just sounds complete. It sounds completely different of what I would sound like. Yeah. So try like what one of the things that we recommend too is grabbing like a book, like a fantasy book or a sci-fi book or whatever that has a lot of dialogue, and try to different uh, variations with the characters. That's also good for a reel too, is that you yeah. can use these scenes as kind of inspiration for dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's something that you can do on your own, like. Oh, if I have a stuffy nose that I start talking like this, and then I could go up here and be here, and I'm a crazy wizard now. Ah! <laughs> and then, like that can be put in your wheelhouse, and you're like, oh, next time I get a character that crazy can... wizard. There it Check. is. Yeah. I've got it. <laughs> or like a variation on a crazy wizard. Yeah. You know. Um, so Speaking that's what one of the things that we do. Yeah. Um, so let's say you booked the job. Mm -hmm. Now it's either going to be here are all the lines. We liked the tone that you had in your recording. Do this at home and send us the finished product. Or we've booked some time in a studio with a director. Please come in and we're going to uh, work with you on that. Then on the bigger projects, like, you know, if it's like a, you know, a video game such as like Fire Emblem or something, they will call you into a studio. They want a director there. They want um, someone editing and, and recording the audio so it all sounds the same within all of the uh, different actors. They don't want someone at home recording with a different mic and right. this person recording differently. Especially with anime because you're going in and you have to match mouth flaps. Yes. Which is fun. So with anime <laughs> and, and certain video games too that have like yeah. story mode, uh, it uh, a lot of people don't realize it, it, the, the animation's already done. It's right. already been it's already been released in Japan. I think they no, know. No, they this. know. No, I'm saying <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm saying a lot of people don't uh, don't know that like it it's uh, it's almost like a puzzle. Like yeah, or sometimes music. the script and sometimes the script is translated very oddly. <laughs> to where you'll have two flaps of the, like two or three flaps of the mouth, but have a paragraph to read, and you're like, "There's just no way." Mm -hmm. It's like, "Did you hear about what happened?" Like you, you can't fit it in like two flaps. So sometimes in the booth, you're gonna have to, you know, get creative with the director and the the people. Um, W that are you know representing the game and be like we have got to retranslate this because that means no way. it was bad localization and that used to be my job but yeah. th if it was bad then it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> Good save. Thanks. Good save, Xander. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we, we always say like having a musical background really helps with this mm -hmm. because you're going to get in the studio and they're going to have, um, sometimes you'll get to listen to the Japanese version first and kind of hear what the tone of the, the line is, but then it'll be completely silent and you'll get three beeps and Beep. you come in on Beep. the fourth. Beep. And now I start, oh my God, you guys are the best or something like that and Beep. try to match Beep. it in. Beep. Then, yeah. Yeah. So it's like a, it's almost like a rhythm game where you have to kind of match. Um, they'll they'll try and time it out for you to where you can try and match the flap. So having Let's, a music background or any type of rhythm background actually really does help because uh, it's then it, then it you can you're able to match it quicker. Yeah. Plus, like then you're good at hitting the arrows with your feet too as they scroll up the screen. DDR. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Um, but another another. Uh, example of of um, a different type of booking. Say you were going in for a video game. Good luck. No, just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> okay. no, I'm going to talk a little bit about video games here, guys. So for the video games, um, make sure you are learning how to scream properly. Uh, this is where another thing where a musical background can come in handy. Uh, I, I know people laugh at us, but take take a couple of voice classes. Because like voice lessons. Voice lessons. Using your diaphragm and learning how to like scream and project correctly without ruining your vocal cords is going to save you. There are voice actors who you know do a, have like a two year career because they they book a whole bunch of like different video games and different things like that and then rip their vocal cords. I mean the, the, to their bleeding. Yeah. Uh, it's it can get very very dangerous, especially with the video games because you're screaming so much. There's a lot of a uh, ha ha. Uh, stuff and death scenes. Death scenes are fun. Yeah. It's just screaming. Um, but if you if you're going full force the entire time, you're gonna wreck your voice. Yeah. Um, take it from someone who who's had two vocal surgeries. Not from not from video games. Not from screaming. Uh, I had a cyst on my vocal cord, so it was it was just sh shitty genetics. But <gasps> you said a swear. I did. But the, b because I've had to deal with vocal issues for other things, I had to be aware of what I was doing with my voice. So for example, I, I booked Rainbow Mika while I still had this, this cyst on my vocal cords 
did all of Rainbow Mika, had surgery, my voice completely changed, then I had to go in and match Rainbow Mika again. So then, so then all that rough texture that I had in my voice before the surgery, I had to match it. So I was like, this is, so, so I, there was a lot of me just like screaming in the closet trying to match what I did before. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but, but no, you learn how to scream correctly. Uh, don't, don't wreck your vocal cords, because it it's an instrument and it's a muscle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yes. There's really no answer for that. No, uh, I get I, acquainted with the cops. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I wouldn't record at, you know, two in the morning when they right. think you're getting murdered. Um, you know, try and time it out to where it's like, you know, the middle of the day where, you know, like if you're doing something. And also, you know, you're not, when you're recording something, if you're, if you're booking like a big video game or something like that, they're going to bring you into a studio. You're not going to be recording all of the screams and yelling. Uh, that's usually something that you do in studio. So hopefully you won't be screaming too much in your in your house. But also, if you can uh, record with your laptop and microphone, then go in your car because that's mostly soundproof. Yeah, or like a garage or um, like a closet, something that something that will contain some of the sound. Um, but I've definitely had neighbors being like, "Oh, you know, how's your grandma?" I'm like, "What?" <laughs> They're like, "Isn't your grandma visiting?" And they're like, "Oh my gosh, they've heard me like talk like an old lady for an hour." Mm -hmm. Like, I heard about the new car that you're driving. You know, <laughs> they're probably thinking there's like a crazy old lady next door. And they're right. <laughs> it's just me, <laughs> <laughs> a crazy old cat lady. Who? Yeah. Where? Uh, the other thing too is that once you get into the booth, don't be afraid to get physical with the roles, especially with fighting games or things like that. Fun story. Yep, I knew this was coming. <laughs> okay, so back to Rainbow. Tell Mega. us how you got banned from the studio. <laughs> didn't I didn't get banned? Let's just say they move a lot of breakables when I'm around. <laughs> So I get very, uh, if, uh, the, who, I don't know if any of you guys saw, like there was a video of Hugh Jackman doing ADR for Wolverine, of him like running, going, like, you know, like fully, like, you know, fighting, doing, he was doing the sound effects and the screaming and, and breathing. And he was like drenched in sweat, like fully moving in the, in the studio booth. That's uh, a lot of voice acting takes a lot out of you. You can't be moving around too much because you have to stay center. But there's a lot of time when you're like, um, uh, you know, trying to, to convey pain or, or death or like, you know, effort. emotion, huh? Or effort. Or effort. Or, and yeah. uh, don't be afraid to like get a little physical. Like there's a, you know, they want small effort, medium effort, you know, strong effort. So you have to go, ha, ha, ha. So you have to like give them different levels. And I'm always like throwing punches and getting really intense with it because if it, unless you're like really feeling it, you're not gonna convey it with your voice. Same thing with pain. Like a, a punch to the gut is gonna sound a lot different to like a punch to the face. I know that sounds weird, but it's like, you know, like a or a ha, you know, it, it's, it's, um, it's a lot of <laughs> people are just like next door. Probably like, is she okay? No, it's fine. <laughs> Welcome to Anime Los I'm Angeles. I'm fine, guys. <laughs> um, but uh, I definitely broke a lamp when I was Rainbow Mika because I got way too into the muscle spirit and knocked a lamp over, and that shattered. And I don't think they kept that one in the game. No. But uh, <laughs> they they weren't mad. But the, the next time I came they into that so studio, I, I did realize that like, everything was moved like very <laughs> far away from where the mic was. So you have they to were just Bonnie like, proof like, the studio. Bonnie's coming. Let's move this chair. <laughs> let's get the lamp out of the way. Ooh, yeah. this is probably breakable. Let's put the baby gate up. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. And then the other thing with with video games too is to kind of revel in and uh, find the joy in the monotony because you're gonna have to say everything, especially with with what I did with an announcer role is that you have to say the numbers one through 99 but you have to give three takes of every number so you're just like one 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 two 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 like and it's just till 99 <laughs> so that and that's just like one section of it like you have to say all of the characters names in different ways and like KOs and things like that so It'll take some time and it takes stamina, but you just have to be excited to be there and, and mm -hmm. to give it your all. Because that's the other thing too, is that if you're putting forth the effort, the directors want to work with you, the studio wants to hire you, and the clients are happy at the other end, and mm -hmm. then you get to be in a video game that's on the shelves at GameStop. Woo! That, <laughs> that uh, they're charging way too much for. Right? <laughs> uh, just 
uh, going off of that too, with uh, with the use of your voice, make sure to warm up before you go yeah. in, before you do anything, before you do an audition, before you go in for a session. Uh, and that's another thing where voice lessons will come in handy. Do vocal warm ups. Uh, really make sure like your voice is awake and and your range is there. Um, don't be afraid to ask for a break. If your voice is getting tired, you know they, you know it's. You don't want to keep going and just and, and wait till it's wrecked to where you can't speak the next day. Because a lot of the time they'll call you in again if they need you. And if your voice is gone, then your voice is gone. Yeah. So uh, then you know, you're fired. Drink, uh, you know, <laughs> drink hot tea, lemon. There's a, there's a. Um, I can never remember the name. I know we really okay. need to look this up. Okay, so if you Google. Hulk juice. No, we call it Hulk juice. <laughs> if you if you Google Chinese throat syrup, it comes in a red. Uh, it has a red label. It looks like tar. Also, if you talk to people who have done voiceovers before, they're, they're like, all gonna know. Yes, what this I know is. what you're talking exactly about. Exactly what this is. I think it's slippery elm. No, it's it's. Huh? Yes. Uh, That's probably. it. That's it. And we call it Hulk juice yeah. uh, because the gentleman who did the voice of the Hulk for years had to <laughs> swig it on a daily basis and just to like get those thick, screams out. It like is thick syrup. tar, but it is, you guys, it is like a miracle it's elixir. A you, take a, you take a spoonful of that, you'll be able to scream for another hour. It's great. But you shouldn't but you because shouldn't. it numbs your voice and you'll do lots of damage. <laughs> but it's all natural and it's very good. And uh, it, a, any voiceover who's in the, who's in the industry that, that has had to do like a crazy video game or any type of... Uh, insane, like Dragon Ball Z type of yelling, knows exactly what we're talking Poor about. Sean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Allison other thing Jaffe was the one who told me about that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing that we recommend is throat coat, which is slippery elm tea. If you've done any sort of like vocal exercises, you're probably familiar with that too. It's great for soothing sore vocal cords. Or a, a spray called Entertainer Secret. Don't. I mean. You shouldn't really use numbing yeah. spray because you're gonna do more damage. But, no, if, but in a I'm, pinch, these are all like these are all in emergency scenarios where you have to get through another 20 minutes, and you know, and it's just. Watch, one of you is gonna come to us with like a bloody throat. And like, like, you said, and we're like, <laughs> you said I could use this throat spray. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, Harvey Fierstein. <laughs> Tracy. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you get into the booth. Uh, um, one of the biggest things that I wish somebody would have told me is that don't touch the microphones because they will get very mad at you because it's someone's job to make sure that the microphone is at the correct height and uh, you could break it and it's very expensive equipment. I am a taller person and so normally when I walk into a booth, the microphone is like at my chest and I just have to stand there because I know now until someone comes <laughs> in to adjust the mic for me. The first job I did, I went in and I was like, I know how to do this and it's like, no! And I was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't uh, know. Another another secret that a lot of people don't uh, know about is if your voice is like watering funny and like or it's getting kind of <laughs> smacky. I know that's I know these are horrible watering words. Watering funny. Like your voice is. You have lots of saliva. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's get, <laughs> getting spitty. You're getting like smacky, or your vo you're get, you're getting cotton mouth. Uh, a lot of. Just okay. Just stop the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> But you can't stop the drugs and you need a quick fix. Oh, no. Uh, apple slices. <laughs> yeah. A lot of uh, voiceover booths will have uh, apples Green nearby. apple specifically. Green apple specifically. Or, or apple slices. Take one or two bites of apple or a, um, an apple slice and it, and it kind of clears your palate and helps you uh, get through without shouting like that with all the smacking sounds. Also, before a job, try to avoid dairy because that'll clog up your throat and mm -hmm. make you sound real gross, in, like cheese or milk or things like that. You know what dairy is. And also chocolate. Try not to eat chocolate. I know, guys. It's hard. <laughs> and uh, carbonation. So don't do what we're doing right now. I'm not, I'm not working. What are you talking about? I'm just trying to stay awake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sometimes caffeine can also uh, be bad for your voice it'll as well. It kinda, it it'll dry it out and dehydrate your vocal cords. So just stay lubricated. Uh, d you know, water, lemon juice, honey, all that fun stuff. Uh, <laughs> that'll coat your throat in a healthy way. And... Uh, yeah, or our awesome Hulk juice. <laughs> Just yeah, buy some of that syrup. It's the best. You can find it in China. We should probably get sponsored. By we them. should, right, <laughs> man? Um, and then, uh, so when you go in, either you have your mic at home, and uh, one of the best accessories you can get is a pop filter. Yes. So that's what prevents. Do the you plosives. hear all those? <laughs> 
ha- that we're hitting in here. And you're not supposed yeah. to do that. That's that's not going to sound really good. That's not how you treat sound oh, equipment. Sorry. Anyway, uh, I'm showing them examples. Yeah, <laughs> you have the pop filter, and you want to keep it about a fist away from the microphone, uh, and that's the same in the booth as well. Uh, so that way you can get nice and intimate with that pop filter without being on the microphone. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then uh, other than that, I think you just try to do the best you can for the job, and then you got to keep your mouth shut for almost a year most of the time. Yep. Uh, depending on what the translation is at. Uh, and also, wise. a lot of people don't realize when you audition for something, uh, a lot of the time it's going to be labeled under a different name than what it actually is. I auditioned for a thing called Project Thunder. <laughs> Two years later, Street Fighter came out. That was Project Thunder. Oh, you revealed their code name on oh. camera. No, actually. Capcom. No. Hello, Mr. Capcom. No, no. She said it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just using that as an example. They're uh, sending the police. It was not Project Thunder, but I'm using it <laughs> as an example. <laughs> Smooth save. <laughs> Everyone believes you. Thanks. <laughs> we'll fix that in post. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> but yeah uh, the other thing, too, is that when you're going to audition for something, the best thing to do is to send in the audition and then forget about it because you can you like sp- spend a lot of time worrying about it, uh, and that worrying is suffering twice. Yep. So just don't worry about it. I know it's hard. Uh, but the other thing, too, is that once you book the job or if you book a callback and you have to go in, you have to remember what you did in the audition. That's so the hardest part. Usually they'll have a, a sample of what you did as an yeah. example, but sometimes they don't. So um, save those files for yourself right? and listen to them before you go into the job so if you, you know can find it. what got you that uh, callback. Yep. Mm-hmm. What if you cannot read the mic? I mean, for example, on my computer... Like if you're a vampire and you're like, I can't use a microphone. I have no reflection. <laughs> I just made that rule up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're Sparkle. not sparkling in the sunlight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> Right. Most computers have microphones. Those are not the best to use right. because they're picking up all of the room sound. They're not a directional mic. Yeah. Uh, uh, the best type of mic to use would be something that would actually be a mic for recording. Uh, the computer mic is just something for like... like these yeah, are, these, these would are work. Okay. These, yeah. these would work. Uh, something like... Uh, th- those microphones are for picking up like for Skype calls or uh, you know picking up something that you're like you know doing like a little video at home. But it wouldn't be something that we would... I, I, would, I don't think I would ever use my... Uh, um, my computer mic for an audition. I would use my phone microphone for an audition for voiceover before I'd use my computer mic because the computer mic doesn't have a great quality sound to it. But phones, uh, especially the newer smartphones, have really good sound quality that if you're not able to, you know, get to your laptop and get to, like, I've had a few auditions where, what, they Xander like, Yeah, I did it just, in my car in, like, uh, at the, because uh, they needed it that day. They needed it, like, in, like, 15 minutes. And yeah. Xander had to quickly go into his car and record and it from his it. phone. And he got it. So, yay, good job. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but that's just another example. Uh, that's another one of the things we can't talk about. Yeah. But that's just uh, another example of, you know, uh, you know, th- your phone could actually work for um, recording. I what I would do is would be transferring the audio file to my laptop and maybe edit a little bit of, of the background noise out of that that way, um, and clean it up a little bit. But I would use your phone mic before a computer mic, just because the computer is going to pick up everything in your in your the vicinity, so it's going to have a lot of white noise uh, and background noise in it. Yeah. Are there any other specific questions? Yeah, yeah. we can open it up for a Q and A. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's like every Talison. every no. job. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, let's make fun of Talison Jaffe. I know. He's my favorite. He's my favorite person I, in the world. Oh my god, I was doing something with him, I love him and so much. like I speak fluent Japanese, and so that's how I kind of got started, and I did localization and things like that uh, with it. But he was trying to do something, and he it was, not uh, sem sempu kyaku. Kyaku. And like just that one word, he got like like fixated on it. He's like, no, no, kyaku, kyaku. And I'm like, kyaku. He's like, no, 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 kyaku. I was like, there's literally no difference in what we're saying right now. Kyaku. 
Uh, yeah. That was frustrating. No, he's great. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of our favorite people. And also, like, a god among the voiceover world. Yeah. So, same as Matt Mercer. So, <laughs> But <laughs> most of the time, the biggest advice that we can give is trust the director. Because yeah. they know what they're doing. They know what the client wants. Mm -hmm. And you don't know anything. Yep. Most of the time, you don't even get the full script. You just get your lines, and that's it. So you don't yeah. even know what you're saying. So I'm like, so that's why the ghost was near the fire hydrants. And I'm like, what is this about? Yeah. That was a real line. Line. Yeah, that was a real life yeah. on the project. So that's why the ghost was near the fire hydrant. I was like, where was a ghost? <laughs> when was a ghost in this? Why am I at a fire hydrant? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And like, so I didn't even know what my character was doing by the ghost at the fire hydrant, but apparently that happened somewhere in the script. But the director, like, one of the things you need to remember is like, you're working as a team and the director wants it to be just as good as you want it to be. And so they're gonna have you do multiple takes and they're gonna have you do weird things that you're like, I don't really feel comfortable doing this or I don't know if this fits the character. But at the end of the day, they have the final say and they're gonna be editing you anyway. So might as well trust them from the get go. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to do, um, so I had to do a lot of singing on Fire Emblem because I did the ending credits song and <laughs> <laughs> wait so when uh the first the translation of the song came right. out it was translated by a, a guy who did the scratch track for it and so, so it was me, sung in sung, a guy's register they sent me the song that was like on an ocean of stars i was like oh this is gonna be great this is totally in my range because i have a very low voice got into the booth and it was on an ocean of stars. like really high <laughs> I'm yeah. like, oh dear lord, because yeah. I'm not a soprano. So that was two days. The I so it, it, you're talking about uh, horror stories with the director. This was more of the director's horror story. That with was me. Wendy Lee. That was Wendy here. Lee, who's here. In fact, She's she just came ran, ran around her table to give me a hug. And she flipped us off. It was weird. Yeah, no, she was I'm like, kidding. darn you. I'm kidding, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> darn you and your high notes, Bonnie. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not a soprano. But poor Wendy had to sit uh, two days of hell with me singing, <laughs> <laughs> singing uh, that song. But it's we find finally got all those high notes out and it sounds amazing. So kudos to the audio engineer and who had to edit that. And butt cheeks were so tight. And I was like, <laughs> 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 Anyway. <laughs> this, this, this panel got weird. Did it get weird or was it's it weird? Been weird. Right, we have a few minutes left. Any more questions, you yeah. guys? Yeah, so uh, one of the things we talked about earlier was um, online, Voices123 or Voices.com. Also Voice Bunny, I think, is one. Mm, is voice one. Bunny might be oh, defunct. No, oh, yeah. I think that's that's where the gray area went. Yeah, um, so with that, it's going to cost you, because um, I think it's about $100, uh, Voices.com, I think, is like thirty nine ninety nine a month. So it gets yeah. expensive, but all their projects on there are, pays 100 bucks or more. So if you book one, it pays for itself for a couple months. Yeah. Um, uh, there's also AU, AUX, A or no, ACX, ACX .org .org is that's for, for audiobooks. audiobooks. Um, you, you know, look on Craigslist, you guys. Look on Craigslist. I found a few jobs on there. A lot of the time, also, look, if, especially if you're just getting started, look into uh, different colleges where they have, like, animation um, and projects. video game student classes. Because all of these kids are... Student projects. Student projects. <laughs> all uh, classes are student classes. You know what I mean. Uh, but Or, like, a, a grad program where they're learning, like, video game design and animation because they're having to create these, uh, these projects. And a lot of the time, they won't have the resources to do the voices themselves and will actually cast um, you know out you know people outside the college for those or they'll even post up things on like college boards and, and, and Craigslist and different <laughs> things like that and that's a good way even if they don't pay you anything it's a good way to get professional copy to turn into a reel plus um, building yeah. those relationships because those are the people that will be making the games or the animation further on in their career exactly. and if you worked for them for free and you do a good job they'll remember that mm -hmm. most of the time Oh, yeah, most of the time. <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> Dang it, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Don, you working for DreamWorks? Why have you taken me with you? Nah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We're not bitter. <laughs> We're horrible. Sorry, Derek. No, yeah, I, so I don't even, uh, oh, wait, we don't even know a Derek. <laughs> I know a Derek. I mean, I know a Derek. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> also, you guys, if you do have any more questions that we don't get to right now, we do have a table downstairs, and we're here tomorrow as well. So also, come we're find on us. Twitter. Oh, yeah, we're on Twitter. <laughs> we're on us. Facebook. We're on every, everywhere. Yeah. 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 It's it. So 
Well, Voices123, I, I used to be a member there. I haven't, I haven't used it in a while, but you, you can seek out the auditions and submit, but they're very weird with that the more you audition, they, the less they want to send you because, because they want you to be more selective, which I'm like, I'm paying you for these auditions. Yeah. Like, what in the world? So just, you know, uh, with Voices123, they want you to kind of pick and choose the projects that you're definitely wanting to audition for. That way the casting directors don't get, you know, 900 emails. Because uh, if they, if you think voice, about yeah. it, they they'll get a, a slew of voice actors that are auditioning that might not necessarily have the time or want to do the project. They're just auditioning for everything. Yeah. And so they go through this whole process of selecting the voice that they want, and then it's not available. And so mm -hmm. they're trying to limit that in a way, but it's a weird way to do it. Yeah, it's it's a weird way to do it. But I have booked a few things on there before in the past, but I also paid for it, which. It gets so expensive, but that's where that's where looking into smaller projects like uh, Craigslist or taking like uh, casting workshops where you're making relationships with casting directors who actually do end up end up uh, casting projects later down the line. Like it can be used to your advantage later when they go, oh, remember that student I had that did that really good voice? That'd be great for this. Well, one of your first things was um, Taliesin called you in because someone was sick. Yeah, and someone dropped out, or someone dropped out for a family emergency. And uh, he called me and was like, hey, you live down the street. Uh, you wanna, <laughs> can you come and be in this video game? I'm like, uh-huh. So move next to a studio. You move, and yeah. <laughs> Become friends with Talos and Jaffe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows their career, Talos and Jaffe. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a quick question? Yes. Instead, for voices yep. um, Oh. Sure. Yeah. Just be very selective on what you want to do. If if you feel like this but is a project that I would be really good at, audition for that. Yeah. If you if there's an audition for like you know they're looking for like a seventy year old male, you know you're like I don't think I can do that voice. So just maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like there's it's just different ways of kind of attacking the problem. Like sometimes like if you have like a work ethic where it helps you feel better to just audition for everything, then mm -hmm. you'll book more often than not because it's the the law of averages. But we audition, yeah. you know, I audition for like 30, 40 projects all the time and I'll book like two. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, woohoo! Uh, but people don't realize like you're, you're constantly having to put yourself out there and audition as much as possible. Because you're um, up against people that are auditioning for everything. Right. So uh, I, I always say, I mean, the more you can you do, the better your chances. Because, you know, if, if, if you just have a bunch of spaghetti noodles and throw it against the wall and hope that See one that of them sticks. sticks. See spaghetti. Be like spaghetti, people. I know. Get out of my head. No, I'm not going to do it. Wonder Twins. Attitude. No. Because <laughs> I'm going to turn into a puddle or something. <laughs> Probably. And you get to be an animal. Yeah. <laughs> Grr. Yeah, uh, but yeah, twins. so if you guys want to find us uh, online, you can find us at... I'm on Twitter at Xanderific. That's with two R's and one F. And you can find our information in the programs, yeah. too. And I'm at Bonnie Bell G. Or you and can get both of us at Library, library Bards. Bards. Hey. <laughs> it's like library cards, but, but with, with a, a B. B. Just like rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah. I, yeah, know. I know. I know. It's bad. Uh, so, yeah, if, in case, you, just because, you know, no one's just stopped us yet. Uh, we do, we are, oh, never mind. No, he they're did. Never mind. Okay, us. we're done. <laughs> okay, bye, bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, we'll just keep going. Nope.